When I was first starting out with gouache, I was guiding myself on what I saw on the internet from different artists, and there is a lot of amazing information out there. But looking back, if I was going to give myself one piece of advice when starting, it would be to invest in good paper. More so than the paint or the paint brushes, the paper can make all the difference between being frustrated and quitting early versus being satisfied and seeing progress and results. I think the biggest reason for this is that when you're working with a water-based medium that reactivates with water, you're having to adapt and often rework and layer your paint. And this happens a lot when you're just getting started with gouache. At the beginning of my painting journey, as I was learning how gouache behaved, I would overwork my pieces, accidentally reactivate the layers I didn't want to, and then add more layers than necessary. And without good paper, this would have resulted in a mess. So I'm going to share with you four of my favourite sketchbooks for working with gouache while we tour through some of the sketchbooks and I'm also going to be painting this forest landscape as well so I can show you briefly how I approach my gouache painting. And I'm not going to be ranking the sketchbooks as I find them to be equally as great with some different features which you can decide what works best for you and I'll link them all below. So the first sketchbook is this one I'm painting in right now. This is the Strathmore 400 series mixed media paper in tone tan. And as you can see with my approach, I love to layer paint a lot. My first layers are always watery. They're the base layers where I'm laying down big areas of colors and shapes so I can build on top. And this paper really takes all the layers and water so well. It takes a lot for this paper to start pilling and because of the thickness, it hardly buckles, which I really appreciate because it means I can paint on the other side of the page really nicely as the paper stays relatively flat. With this landscape, I was really trying to capture that forest light that comes through the leaves and it took me several tries to get those streaks of light coming through perfectly. And so when this happens where I can't get something quite right, I'm often going over the paint, kind of like erasing it with more paint and then repainting on top. Or sometimes I use water to reactivate the gouache to kind of wash it away with my paintbrush. And obviously doing this can really overwork the paper, but the pages in the sketchbook stay really solid. So let me show you a bit inside this sketchbook. So there's something specifically about tan toned paper that I really like against my gouache paintings and studies. I always say that there's something about tone paper that elevates sketchbook work and can make everything look more cohesive, especially if you're doing a spread with lots of different illustrations. I started using this sketchbook to record my progress with portraits initially, and then I began also using it for other sketches and paintings. Um, there are still some gaps in the sketchbook and pages I haven't filled out, which this is reminding me that I need to go back and use up for sure. I think this is also where my love for fruit studies really emerged. There's something about that contrast between the bright colours and the tan paper that I find so satisfying and I love doing fruit studies to practice achieving different textures. I also really like the size of the sketchbook. It's the 8.5 by 11 inches and it gives me the option of doing these bigger landscapes, which I sometimes feel like doing to switch it up. So this sketchbook I mainly filled last year and a bit the year before and the forest scene I painted earlier is the start of a new one of these sketchbooks and I definitely think I use this one as a more finished piece type of sketchbook and this year I've started to use my sketchbooks in a bit of more of a looser way trying to experiment and not necessarily create beautiful spreads which is completely fine to do, like I love having sketchbooks where I want to make the spreads look beautiful, but I also want my sketchbooks to feel like a comfortable space to explore new things and create imperfect pages. The next sketchbook I'm going to show you is the first sketchbook that I completed fully in the first year of using gouache. And this is the Strathmore 400 series watercolour paper with the soft cover. It's five and a half by eight inches. 
and it is 300 GSM, so grams per square meter, which indicates the weight and tells you about the thickness of the paper. I forgot to say that the tone sketchbook is also 300 GSM. So at this point in my gouache journey, I was very much aiming to create these finished pieces in my sketchbook. And you'll see how on every page I was trying to do these mainly landscape studies where I was learning about layering and blending with gouache. And I was very much still learning how the paint behaved. So there was a lot of layering. And I remember really trying to blend the skies where you couldn't see any of the lines between the colors, uh, creating like color gradients basically. Um, which definitely resulted in me overworking the paper, but as you can hopefully see, this paper stayed pretty much intact. There are a couple of unfinished pieces like this one where I was trying to do something a bit more ambitious, but it wasn't working out, so I abandoned it. I think this is one of the only pieces in the sketchbook where you can see a bit of pilling and this is because I overworked this page so much. I was so adamant on getting the perfect colour gradient with a smooth transition and I think now I definitely don't focus on that as much um, and I like to embrace the paint strokes a bit more. I think my styles developed a bit differently too. I also remember loving this sketchbook because it was so small and so it felt less intimidating to do these paintings which is definitely a tip that I like to share now if you're just starting out. Painting small can be such a good way of learning quickly and feeling more in control of the paint. It also helps you to fill up a sketchbook a bit faster which is quite motivating when you're just starting out. The paper in this book is thick and has some tooth to it um, so it's not fully smooth but it's also not a super rough texture. It's really interesting to look back on these paintings because I actually feel proud of them. Like I don't really cringe at my older art because it was definitely reflective of where I was at in that point in time. I remember what kind of art I was drawn to and I was really fixated on developing my skill, which sounds weird to say because obviously I'm still interested in developing my skills. Um, but what drove me more in this period was to try to master gouache, whereas now I'm in a phase where I'm trying to grow my artistic voice and style more. The third sketchbook I want to show you is this accordion sketchbook by Hannah Muller and I have a whole video on filling this sketchbook in a week, I'll link that on the screen, but essentially I love this sketchbook for two things. Firstly the paper's thickness and tooth was perfect for gouache, I really enjoyed painting on it and I was able to layer the paint really well and the paper did not buckle at all. And secondly I just love that it's an accordion sketchbook, it's so cool to paint on and be able to see what you're creating as you go along, it was really fun to use and see the end results of all the illustrations side by side. I really went on a bit of a journey with the sketchbook and I took more about it in my video but I was trying to go with the creative flow and kind of just paint what I was feeling like in the moment and so I love that this sketchbook helped me do that organically because of the open layout. The fourth and final sketchbook I would really recommend is Etcher's The Perfect Sketchbook, which I really rate very highly. The paper is just so beautiful in the sketchbook. It's cold pressed and has a lot of tooth. It's very rough paper, but I personally love the texture and the way it looks. This was also among the first sketchbooks I used when I started out, and you can see that because of all the landscapes I was doing. And again, this paper really helped me because of its ability to take so much water and paint. I have a more in-depth, longer sketchbook tour of this specific sketchbook where I go into a bit more detail as to why I have so many of the same landscapes repeated in here. I'll link it on the screen in case you want to watch. Now I haven't mentioned prices because I think they will vary depending on where you're based, but this sketchbook is the more expensive one of all of them. If you're on a budget, the other sketchbooks are just as wonderful and cheaper than this one and if you do feel like trying it out, they do have a smaller size too. Um, this is also 300 GSM but it's 100% cotton which I think is what makes it feel so heavyweight and sturdy.
I hope it was useful for you to know my top sketchbook recommendations and fun to have a flip through them. Let me know in the comments what sketchbooks you love and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!